Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory is a way of looking at what electrons do on atoms that influences the overall shape and molecular geometry of your molecule. You'll want to know what an electron is <laughs> to be able to talk about this. And if you don't, then you want to go back and learn that before you start this video. So, what we're trying to figure out here is what influences how molecules look. What do they look like in three dimensions? And this is really important in drug design and biochemical processes because you're basically trying sometimes to find a molecule that will fit into a, a spot and block it. And so you need to know what the shape of that spot is so that you can design your molecule to be that same shape. You can figure out the molecular shape of a molecule using a Lewis dot structure, which I guess I should have included in the <laughs> things to know before you watch this video. Um, if you haven't watched the Lewis dot structure video yet, that's okay. This is part of that whole understanding of what Lewis dot structures tell us. So once you have a Lewis dot structure and you have some knowledge of this, you can figure out the shape of your molecule. So what is valence shell electron pair repulsion? Well, it's the idea that electrons are like charges and so they repel each other. Hmm. If I'm an electron and I'm another electron, we don't like each other. Versus if you have an electron and a proton, right, they're very happy because un, um, charges that are not alike attract each other. So non-bonding electrons, it turns out, repel more strongly than bonding electrons. And part of the reason for that is your bonding electrons are between two nuclei. So you've got a nucleus, which is really just a big old bundle of positive protons and neutrons. And you might have a pair of electrons that's bonding between those. And so those electrons are stabilized by the fact they're attracted to this nucleus and this nucleus. On the other hand, if you have a non-bonding pair of electrons, they just have one nucleus that they're interested in. And so they're not as stabilized and they take a lot more space on the atom and they have a stronger repulsion. So you kind of think of, of the non-bonding pairs of electrons as they're kind of the, the bully on the block. Electrons, we know, will arrange themselves on the central atom so that they minimize those repulsions, right? If you don't really like someone in a group, what do you do? You try and avoid them. So electrons are in a group, they try and avoid the other electrons, if at all possible. This creates these shapes that we see. So if we have two um, bonding pairs on uh, a central atom, like for instance what we see here, they will maximize their distance separating one from the other and that gives you 180 degrees um, in what's called the bond angle. So this, this distance between one bond to the other is 180 degrees and that gives you a linear shape. If you have three things attached to a central atom, then you um, don't have as much space to spread out and so your bond angle gets smaller and it diminishes down to 120 degrees um, and we see, I almost said 120 degrees Celsius, which is not what we're talking about here, but what can I say? I'm, I'm well trained. Anyway, if you have three things on your central atom and they have to maximize their separation, we actually end up with trigonal planar, which really is a flat molecule. Tetrahedral, on the other hand, is when you're looking at four things, four electron bonding groups on your central atom, and now you see that we're moving out of two dimensions into three, and we've got um, an atom up and another one in the plane and one coming out towards you and one going away from you. And this gives us tetrahedral. If you have five things attached, then you get trigonal bipyramidal, and if you have six, you get octahedral. And you can see there that my bond angle is now down to 90 degrees because I'm having to fit six things around my central atom. In an introductory level chemistry course, we generally stick with linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral. If you're watching this because you're in general chemistry, then we'll be talking about trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral as well. So what happens if some of those bonding electrons get replaced with non-bonding electrons? Remember we said that non-bonding electrons take up more space and they have stronger repulsions. So take up more space because they have stronger repulsions than the bonding electrons. Repulsive forces. That's a good way to put it. Whoops, helps if I spell it correctly. Repulsive. Pulse. 
set of forces. Well, what happens if we consider tetrahedral? We started with four things attached to our central atom. If we take one of those off, which means now we have a non-bonding pair of electrons, now um, my shape changes, obviously, because I don't have four things, four atoms that are defining my molecule. And if I take another one of those off, now I have two non-bonding pairs of electrons on my central atom, and my shape changes to bent. So you might recall that tetrahedral started with a bond angle of 109.5. Well, let's check out what happens once, well, actually, let's talk about some theory first. So those bond angles here, I started with 109.5. They're actually going to get smaller. So this is going to be less than 109.5, and this is also going to be less than 109.5. And in fact, our bent angle will be smaller than our Trigonal, by, uh, trigonal pyramidal angle, bond angle as well. So why does that occur? Well, I almost gave it away here because I was a slide ahead of myself. Remember we talked about the bonding electron pair as being distributed between two nuclei. Here's one nucleus, here's another nucleus, here's are my happy bonding electrons. See how they're distributed between those two nuclei? On the other hand, if I just have one nucleus and I have a non-bonding pair of electrons, it takes up way more space. So they take up more space, and if we think about valence shell electron pair repulsion as trying to map who's taking up space on the central atom, then non-bonding pairs of electrons, they're going to squish your bonding pairs. So what we see in something like ammonia, for example, which is NH3, note the non-bonding pair of electrons there, they force all these other guys down and closer together. So that bond angle, which was originally 109.5 in the tetrahedral, is now squished and is less than 109.5. If I have a multiple bond, that's going to exert a similar effect of not quite as large of a proportion. So here's CH4, tetrahedral, bond angle 109.5. We take one of those H's off. Now we're looking at NH3. My bond angle has reduced a little bit down to 107. Take a second of those H's off. We're looking at something like water. And now I'm down to 104.5. So as you replace the bonding electrons with non-bonding electrons, it both changes the shape and it makes your bond angle squish.